And even in, in the states, there are a few wins, right? States like Colorado are seeing a billion dollar industry emerge with the full legalization of cannabis. And from a criminal justice perspective, it's really hard for cartels to sell illegal substances when those substances have been fully legalized and sold at malls and boutique stores. <laughs> Makes it kind of hard. <sighs> Welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, a few quick things before we jump into the new episodes you're about to check out here. Uh, as you may notice, there are some uh, laughs that you hear in the backdrop, and that is because this episode was filmed in front of a live virtual audience over Zoom. Uh, these shows happen once a month, and if you want to be a part of the live virtual audience, you can do so by grabbing tickets to one of the upcoming shows uh, right now. They happen on the last Friday of every single month, and it's a new show every time that involves some um, storytelling and, of course, the socially conscious comedy that you guys uh, are, are about to enjoy in, in just a few minutes. And sometimes there will be some special guests kicking the show off, so it's something that you guys don't want to miss. So if you want to grab tickets, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. And that's pretty much the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. So if you enjoy these videos and you want to check out more things that I have put out there, uh, you can check out my live stand-up comedy albums. You can check out uh, all of the past episodes of this show, uh, my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and join us on the live streams uh, when I stream on Mondays through Wednesdays and Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So again, go check everything out at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, now onwards to the episode. Now, America isn't unique in its war on drugs, and racial, but it is unique in its racial disparity when it comes to that subject. Human Rights Watch has reported that in the 70s, African Americans in the U.S. were already being overrepresented in drug arrests, with twice as many arrests as Caucasians. But since the war on drugs began, African Americans have been arrested for drug offenses at five times the rate of white offenders, and yet on average, Caucasians commit more drug crimes. And it's true, Caucasians do commit more crimes against drunks. Think, think of the people that decided to make a plant <laughs> illegal, <true>. right? <laughs> true. And truly committed this crime against nature. Right? It's mostly been white people, okay? Nixon, Hoover, Reagan, Biden, Clinton, they're all white people, all right? Kamala <laughs> Harris and Obama are the minorities of minorities fucking over other minorities. <laughs> By 2014, half of the 1.5 million arrests were related to small marijuana offenses. Only 3% were high-level drug traffickers. And look, these laws did nothing to help the rate of addiction or trafficking. And yet, addiction rates have been unaffected, drug prices have dropped considerably, and the U.S. has the highest incarceration rates in the world. In 2010, more than half of all federally incarcerated prisoners were serving drug-related sentences. Even the CIA has been implicated in the trafficking of illegal drugs. If our own government Absolutely. can't avoid violating drug laws, how can we be expected you to? Think? <laughs> yeah, and guess what, guys? The CIA, primarily run by white people, okay? <laughs> Almost exclusively. Name, name one black C CIA director. Name You can't do it. You can't do it. Right, proving even further that white people in power are committing more drug-related crimes than your average person of color. But Portugal is one of the countries that has faced a major drug problem in the late 90s and early 2000s. 
right? And Portugal, much like America, prosecuted its drug offenders as drug traffickers, which, go figure, didn't help the rate of addiction and overdoses either. I think what we found out in Portugal after 15 years is that using any sort of stick or any sort of trap doesn't work. If you increase the penalties for drug users, there's the usage decrease. It doesn't. The Portuguese learned that lesson in the late 1990s when enforcement was practiced as the main solution to a horrible drug crisis. The country of 10 million people had up to 100,000 addicts. That's an astounding 1% of the population that was hooked on hard drugs. Now, in 2001, Portugal decided that this was a public health crisis and decided to treat the issue as one. All drugs in Portugal are decriminalized, which means that using these drugs is not illegal, but trafficking high quantities is Right? And, and when those drugs are confiscated from the drug traffickers, they are usually burned, which is really just a waste of drugs. <laughs> but under this new system, if you're caught with drugs on your person, you don't have to go you, you don't have to go to prison. You just go to counseling with a sociologist. He heads up what's known as Lisbon's Dissuasion Commission. We were allowed to sit in on one of its sessions. There are no suit or ties here, no gavels or gowns, just a sociologist in a sweater. This isn't a court, and Kappa says he's not a judge. When I wake up in the morning and come back to work, I'm, I'm not thinking on how many fines I'm going to apply or how many people I'm going to threaten to uh, make them stop using any illicit substances. So it's fairly easy for us to focus on health issues and what, uh, what help we can provide people in terms of those issues. Portugal's Dissuasion Commission is essentially a form of state-mandated early intervention. By the way, I just want to point out, like, not all sociologists wear sweaters. This, this video makes it sound <laughs> like they all have, some of them wear, like, just regular shirts. You, know, they, if you're, you can wear whatever the fuck you want if you're a social, okay? Look, CBC is... <laughs> really hammering down this whole like sweater sociologist thing it's you know but look portugal has also employed psychologists as community outreach to help these people get access to clean and better equipment for their drug use <laughs> ines and marta are psychology graduates their job is to find homeless drug addicts they give them clean supplies so when they inject, they don't get sick. And they come to the same neighborhoods every day. They meet the same people, they know their stories, and they provide a very human connection to the healthcare system. This has severely decreased the amount of ODs and has also provided a pathway to recovery on the patient's own terms. Now, they also provide mobile methadone vans, right? Methadone provides relief from withdrawal systems without giving you a high. Rather than make it difficult for people to go through addiction recovery, Portugal is making an effort to get that relief directly into the hands of the people. It's almost like they decided to treat people like, you know, people. It's crazy. It's wild. Now, currently, they spend about 90% of their budget on social services and about 10% on drug enforcement. People are also placed into job programs to help build skills and work experience to get them out into the world. This is what the point of prisons should be to help people, not demonize them. Drug-related deaths went from 400 people a year down to 30 a year. But programs like these are currently in jeopardy considering that when the re recession hit, social programs like this were cut first. Interesting, I always find it interesting that when capitalism busts, it attacks the social programs that help people first. Right. Programs like these decrease crime, addiction, and hospitalizations connected to drug use. So shouldn't the cops be cut first? 
but instead the programs that drive real change are removed, proving once again that capitalism is a system that thrives on inequality and misery. To move to a different part of Europe, in the Netherlands, psychedelics have been legalized because they realize that drugs like LSD, MDMA, and psilocybin are good for mental health. You can actually go to a retreat where under medical supervision, you can experience these drugs and how they affect your mind. Most people find that it helps them reconnect with a part of themselves and nature. I want to reconnect with my younger self, that that person who was not jaded by life, who was not guarded by disappointment, who um, had not adapted to the circumstances in a way that had changed the underlying person, which I felt my life had done. And even in, in the states, there are a few wins, right? States like Colorado are seeing a billion dollar industry emerge with the full legalization of cannabis. And from a criminal justice perspective, it's really hard for cartels to sell illegal substances when those substances have been fully legalized and sold at malls and boutique stores. <laughs> Makes it kind of hard. <sighs> On a legislative level, the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Engagement, or MORE Act, is working to undo everything Nixon, Reagan, and Biden did with their callous racist war on drugs. This act would remove cannabis from Schedule 1 and any other federal convictions for possession. It will also make it easier for dispensaries to be banked and process various different types of payment, just like every other legitimate business. Prohibiting and making marijuana illegal created a criminal justice system that profited off of it. But it also created a criminal underground to meet the demand of the people who want these substances. The same thing happened when booze was prohibited in the 1920s. Guess what? People still found a way to get drunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People like Nixon, Reagan, Biden, and Clinton are responsible for escalating violence because they didn't like a plant. Passing the MORE Act, as Stephen Hawkins of the Marijuana Policy Institute puts it, will set us on a path to correct the unfair system and restore justice to those that have been victimized by prohibition. Fully legalizing these drugs and educating people on what they do will ensure that we have a more enlightened populace and actually start restoring justice. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm and if you're trying to subvert censorship the best place to do that is rockfin uh, rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn an income from what they create and there's absolutely no censorship on that platform so if you want to follow me on rockfin you can follow me at uh, rockfin.com slash krishmohan haha and if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you would, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making either a one-time donation, which acts as uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows. Uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and and leave comments for me as uh, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. 
Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.